Hi, my name is Dan Beery. Uh, I'm gonna do a looping rig rundown. So buckle your seatbelts, should be fun. Okay, well this is my practice room. Uh, in this practice room, I have my uh, entire looping rig. Uh, you can see there are a lot of uh, bits and pieces and moving parts, and I'm gonna go through all of them. I'll start uh, I think I'm going to go from left to right, so uh, we'll start with my drums. Uh, I'm using this uh, Alesis uh, drum pad. It's very nice. It sounds great. Uh, I have a Yamaha uh, MOX F6 synthesizer that, that I used uh, for all of my keyboard sounds. Um, the way I have these rigged together... I run the output from the keyboard into the Alesis. And in that way, I have one stereo output from the Alesis that goes into the looper, which I'll show you in a minute. Actually, I can follow that down. That goes down and goes into the side of the looper right there. And uh, that is a stereo input. Uh, and that really improves the sound of the keyboards, improves the sound of the drums, that you get some really nice panning effects. Uh, the way I do the drums, I do them standing up, and I have a little stick holder here, so I can pull these out quickly, play, and throw them right back in. Have a kick drum pedal down here, works great, uh, love that. Uh, moving down, uh, I use this uh, this is just a Bluetooth page turner for my um, uh, for my uh, iPad for uh, viewing lyrics. This sustain pedal hooked up to the keyboard, uh, kick pedal there. Uh, this is uh, the MIDI Maestro. Uh, I, this is a MIDI controller that I use. Uh, to control various aspects of the looper operation. And mostly, I just, uh, I'm just getting into a second page of items, but what I like to do is have some kind of standard buttons and go with those. Uh, this is a nice switcher, has a, uh, a very clear display, and uh, the, the standard buttons I have on here is track two and three, stop and start, all stop and start, mute all tracks, which is useful in some songs where uh, you don't want to stop it. You just want to uh, have the music drop out for a second. Um, and a low pass filter, just on some songs it's appropriate. Uh, and I have this button as a magic, uh, I label it magic button. It's not really magic. It just, I use it for a specific song. It does about six or seven different uh, things in, in a single step. It's pretty cool. That's why a uh, MIDI controller is nice. And I uh, have this all built so that everything is very close because I need to be able to, while I'm playing drums and keyboards, I need to be able to also get to the uh, RC600. Uh, immediately to the left of the RC600 is an expression pedal. This I have uh, connected to the RC600. Um, I have it set up to control the, le the uh, level for uh, the vocal echo. And so uh, that uh, is nice. You get a nice subtle echo uh, at the lowest setting and you get like a big wa echo wash on the highest setting. So now we get to the, uh, to the board itself. Uh, on this board, uh, I've got the Voice Live 3. Um, I have uh, uh, octave pedal, the OC5. I've got a little tuner. Um, and of course the RC six hundred, uh, and everything is uh, everything is pretty tight. I, I'm using a holy board uh, for it. I, I find it 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 seems to work great, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the octave pedal, I 
have the guitar output go into uh, one channel, one mono channel on the RC600, and I have it EQ'd in a certain way. And I have the bass, which is just only the bass, go out to a separate channel. And I have that EQ'd and I have effects on it uh, to give uh, the bass, to make the bass sound great. This pedal is pretty cool. You can play guitar chords on it. And only the, I have it set so that the uh, lowest, uh, uh, only the lowest note is uh, impacted by the octaver. So um, that's great if you're playing big guitar chords. Uh, the, it basically sounds like you have a bass line playing along with you, which is really kind of cool. Uh, this tuner is a live tuner. Um, and I use this because I play violin, which is this thing here. Uh, I play electric violin and sometimes it's hard to hear. Uh, and so while you're playing, if you want to check and make sure you're in exactly on pitch, you can look at this and, and it'll, it'll, it'll tell you if you're, uh, on. I mounted it in a funny way because that's the room I had. I run, uh, into the Voice Live 3, I run, uh, vocals and guitar. And, uh, they then go out of the Voice Live 3 into separate mono channels on the uh, the RC600. Uh, on this side of my board, I have, uh, this is the input for a stereo in input for uh, the keys and the drums. Th this is uh, output, uh, stereo output to the my in-ear setup, my Shure in-ear setup. Uh, and I have a spare output output over here in case I need it, and it's stereo. And it's just a quarter inch stereo uh, plug. So um, moving, I guess, back this way, I have, uh, these are my wireless units. So I've got uh, wireless for uh, vocal mic that my wife uses for singing. So it's just a handheld mic. Uh, this is the vocal uh, uh, wireless unit for my mic, which is a uh, headset mic. So uh, the great thing about this is I can use this uh, while I'm playing drums. I can use it while I'm playing keys. I can walk around with it. Uh, my wire, uh, my guitar is wireless also. This is really handy for when I'm switching between instruments. I can be singing while I'm switching between instruments. Very hard to do when you have to push your face up on a mic. Uh, so uh, this is the guitar wireless. Um, and uh, this whole unit uh, I call the football. Uh, and it actually travels in this box and it sits up above here so that in case I need to adjust any of the levels, I can. Um, and what all I do is I pull it out of the box and I plug the vocal in here and I plug the guitar in there. Uh, I went to quarter inch because it was easier. This thing has quarter inch, you know, the, the wireless setups all have quarter inch out. It just made it very easy. Um, I sum the two, uh, these two, uh, vocals. They're the exact same unit. They have the same output impedance. I basically run them with a Y into this connector. It works great. I save myself having another mixing board in here, which is the last thing I need. Um, so on this side, I have a headphone output. Here I have three three output jacks on this side, three or three jacks on this side, three jacks on that side. Uh, this one's an output jack. This is headphones. These two, uh, this one is guitar in. It's mono. It's coming in directly from the uh, wireless unit. This is the cheap, cheapy Amazon uh, wireless uh, 
thing that I use uh, for my violin, um, which is uh, a, a quite a nice uh, electric violin. Looks like that. Um, and, the, you know, it's a cheap wireless, but it seems to work great. Uh, I never play violin. I never roam too far on violin. On guitar, I can kind of go wherever I want. Um, and so I have a much better unit for that. Um, this is uh, the guitar that I use. It's a, a travel caster. Uh, the reason I use this one is that it is extremely lightweight and uh, I wear this uh, while I'm uh, playing violin. I just swing it behind me and now I can play drums, I can play keys, and it's literally swung behind me and I can whip it back out uh, and start jamming on it for the rest of the song. So having a really lightweight guitar uh, is good and this thing sounds great. Uh, I use all the pickup positions. So, um, it, it sounds great in all of them. It's like a, just like a Strat, except a lot lighter. Uh, so on this side, uh, I have another MIDI switching unit. Uh, and this one is, uh, uh it's just very simple and it's hooked up just to the Voice Live 3. And the reason I did this is that uh, I wanted to have one button to set each of the patches. So as I hit these, you'll see those are changing. Uh, so I have the clean guitar sound, uh, lead sound, distortion sound, and bass. And those, and then I have the uh, these are the quiet versions of them, and these are the loud versions, because when you're looping, you have to, uh, uh, control your mix by yourself. Uh, what goes in is what, uh, what comes out, so, uh, you have to be your own mixing guy. Uh, so that's the, those are the basics of the setup, uh, and the instrumentation, um, let's talk a little bit about how I have the, um, uh, the looper set up. So basically I have one patch. I only use one. Uh, I don't use any presets. I don't use any, um, pre-recorded audio. Uh, and, and, and not that I couldn't, but I didn't want to. What, what I want to be able to do is have a set of uh, this setup and to use this setup and be able to go right from one song into the next song without uh, having to, um, you know, have patches assigned for specific songs. I don't want to program it. I mean, I could. I'm a software executive, so I have no problem with it, but um, I just prefer to to uh, do everything completely live and um, not ha not program everything. And right now, I'm really using this. I came off of a RC300. So, um, you know, I'm accustomed to a three-channel looper. Um, so I'm really only using the first three channels on this. I have this guy programmed to do uh, 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 track four. I don't know if you can see. Yep, there it is. So I have it set to do track four. I ha I have a couple songs I'm working on where I'm going to use that. But um, for now, uh, you can get a lot of mileage out of out of three tracks if you're careful and you put together uh, your arrangements carefully. So let's talk about how I have all the buttons set up. Uh, here, it's really it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the uh, I have this to turn on and off the uh, a vocal echo, uh, and and that is just nice for some song like uh, uh, to end a song or to, if there's a break in the middle of a song 
and you go, ah, you can uh, hit the, the um, expression pedal and get a nice echo wash out of it. Uh, otherwise, it makes for a nice echo sometimes. Uh, this it clears all tracks. No, no surprise there. I put it there because wh when I'm building loops, sometimes I'll start and I'll screw up and I'll just be able to quickly clear all the tracks and start over again without, you know, interrupting the song or making a big deal out of it. Uh, and it's it to me, it's convenient to have it there. This button is an interesting one. Um, I have... Uh, one vocal channel going in, and what I do is, uh, actually, no, I have one, uh, I have one vocal channel going into the board, I split it with a Y, uh, just a plain old Y, into mic one and mic two, and the point of that is, uh, mic one runs straight through all the time. Uh, all my vocal effects come out, out, except for the echo, come out of the Voice Live 3. And it just runs straight through all the time, always hot. Uh, when, uh, and mic, and it, it's wide into mic two. And mic two, uh, uh, mic one is routed so that it never goes into the, uh, into the looper. It's excluded from uh, recording on any tracks. And so what I did is I set up mic two to, uh, to this is muting mic two. This is mic two unmuted. When mic two is unmuted, I can record it on any of the tracks. So this is if I'm doing a vocal, uh, doing building uh, a vocal harmony, I'll Take it off a of mute, sing, 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 put it back, stop recording. And, and so the beauty of that is uh, I'm still getting um, uh, a good audio out of mic one. I mean, you really can't, it, you can't really hear any audible difference between when I'm recording it and when I'm not recording it. And when I have mic two set to a lower volume so that uh, frequently I build two, three, four part harmonies, uh, and that way they're, they're, they don't get too loud. So, uh, I'm, if I recorded mic one, it would it, it quickly get way too loud. So I have this down to, you know, like, I don't know, 70 or 80% on, on mic two. Um, so that's, uh, the basic routing um, if we go to the mixer, so you can see mic two is mute on. When I go like that, you can see mic two is mute off. Uh, let's see if I can get a good angle here. So, uh, that's for mic two. This is, uh, mic one, which is hot uh, all the time, but it never goes into any of the uh, uh, recording loop tracks. Uh, instrument one is the, uh, left and right. Those are the, um, uh, they are the, uh, ah, those are, um, let's see, instrument two. Okay, yeah, the, uh, this one is uh, guitar, and this one is uh, bass. And I have completely different settings on them. Uh, and th this is great. So I can, uh, on the inputs, I can EQ the bass to be very low and, and boomy and nice, and make the guitar also sound very nice. And for uh, instrument two, it's uh, stereo. So that's for the drums and... Uh, the keys. I hope you enjoy this uh, rig rundown. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know. Uh, glad to answer it. Uh, it's uh, uh, definitely a journey putting uh, uh, putting together a rig like this, but uh, uh, I've learned a lot along the way.